Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today we're going to be doing an individual book review for Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. This is Nook. If you have not watched any of my videos, he's a Siberian husky. <laughs> if you guys don't know, this is a YA contemporary book that follows a boy named Felix Love. He's painfully aware that he has never actually been in love, and that's something that he really wants to do. At the beginning of the book, you find out that he and his best friend are enrolled in a summer art program in New York City. He's an upcoming senior, and so he is trying to put together a portfolio so that he can send it to schools and go to art school. Specifically, he really wants to go to Brown, but he hasn't been working on his portfolio. He doesn't really know what direction he wants to take it in. He doesn't really know what is going to get him a scholarship to Brown because he needs a scholarship to go there. Felix is a pretty lonely guy. He fears that he is maybe one marginalization too many. He's black, he's transgender, and he's also queer. So throughout the course of this book, he's tackling all of those things. Also, at the very beginning of the book, someone in this art program posts a bunch of photos of him before he transitioned and also dead names him. So trigger warning for transphobia, which is sprinkled throughout this entire book. So then Felix is also on a mission to try to find out who did that to him. To do so, he ends up creating like a fake profile and he starts catfishing someone. All of that is in the blurb and in the first couple of chapters. So let's get started. My first pro for this book is obviously going to be Felix. I really enjoyed following him and learning about him and struggling along with him. I really connected with Felix's sense of floundering. He doesn't really know what direction he wants to take his portfolio in. He doesn't know what he wants to do in the future. And I think that that's something that a lot of people will be able to relate to because there are periods in your life when you're not going to have a clear direction of where you're going. At least I had those. Felix has so much to process. He hasn't been speaking with his mother who moved to Florida, I believe. His his dad has been slow to adjust and use Felix's chosen name. And so Felix is having issues with that because his father has supported him. He's gotten top surgery, so he has the scars and they're clearly shown on the cover as well as in the book, people see them. But he hasn't been using Felix's name and he almost dead names him a couple of times. That's a whole lot all on its own. Again, he doesn't really know what he's doing for his portfolio or where he's gonna end up going to school or anything like that. And then he's also having to deal with this transphobic attack that has just occurred. And then also, <laughs> he wants to fall in love, so he's trying to seek out love and explore his own self-worth and everything like that. So I just really, really loved Felix. He grows so much in this novel and I really enjoyed seeing him kind of come into his own and realize that he is worth loving and he is worth belonging and everything like that. And I also really appreciate that Felix is not perfect. He does make mistakes. He does choose to do some questionable things like catfishing someone to figure out who did the transphobic attack. And I will say that I was wary about this quasi love triangle situation that was going to be unfolding throughout the course of this book, but I ended up enjoying it. I think that it was handled pretty well. I think that it could have gone down a very messy path, but I think that Case and Calendar did a good job of reining it in. I felt like it was pretty realistic. <laughs> like that could definitely happen in real life. His process of finding out that he is worthy of love and everything like that definitely reminded me of that quote from The Person Being a Wallflower, where they're like, we accept the love that we think we deserve or something like that. I felt like that was showcased in this book. My next pro for this book is that I really loved the LGBT elements in here. As I said, Felix is queer and transgender. A lot of the characters are queer. There are some lesbians in here. There are gay guys. There are bisexual people, I think. So there's just a lot of LGBT characters in here, and I really enjoyed seeing them come together and be a sort of found family in this book. I really like that this explores that even within the LGBT plus community, there are still transphobic thoughts. There are characters in here that are a part of the LGBT community and are transphobic, and I really liked that that was pointed out in here and that that is a terrible thing. Transphobia is disgusting, and I like that it's really showcased in here how terrible it is and how it can come from within, really. There's a lot of transphobia and biphobia in the LGBT plus community, and I'm glad that people are finally talking about it and addressing it and hopefully changing that. <laughs> I also like that this book talks about how white members of the LGBT plus community have more privilege than people of color within the community. So again, I really like the exploration of all of those things. And it's important for people to realize that even though they can be a part of a marginalized group, that doesn't mean that they're as marginalized as other members of that same group, and they should try to help the more marginalized people when they can, if that makes sense. 
I liked that this book really talked about how anyone can have privilege. Felix's best friend Ezra has a lot of money and so he has certain privileges that Felix doesn't have, like being able to just choose a college at random and make it happen and be able to go there. Felix doesn't have that ability, he doesn't have all that money and wealth and power to make things happen for himself. So I like that that was tackled in here as well. Another pro for me was the mystery of finding out who did this attack on Felix. Throughout the story, Felix is still on a mission to find out who deadnamed him and posted all those old photos of him. And I liked that throughout the story, you think that it could be this person or it could be that person or it could be this other person. And so I was really invested in finding out who it was because I really wanted to know so I could hate that character. <laughs> I felt like it kept shifting from person to person and I was just really invested in that. Another pro for me, which I kind of touched on earlier, was that I liked Felix's development of his found family or his chosen family. I think a lot of times in books, people's found family are like the first people that they find, but I liked that in this book, the group that he chooses to surround himself with continues to change as events unfold. And so I really liked that message as well because you don't have to just stick with the first people that give you any amount of acceptance. You get to continue to grow and continue to meet new people and some people are going to just be in your life for a short amount of time and then out they go. And so I like that Felix's group continues to change and shift. And kind of related to that, another pro for me was that your history with someone only gets you so far. Just because you've been friends with someone for a long time or just because you've known someone for a long time and have been friendly with them, that doesn't mean that you have to continue to accept their bullshit and it's okay to cut them out of your life. A small pro for me was that I really liked the depiction of New York City in this because I felt like it was pretty accurate. New York City has a lot of pros, but I do like that this showcase that not everything about New York City is pretty. <laughs> so I like that Felix has to make sure he's careful where he walks because there's poop on the sidewalk sometimes and that is so true. I guess my last pro for this that I'll talk about is that I enjoyed reading about the other characters as well and finding out what was happening with all of them. Obviously you mainly follow Felix, but there are quite a few other characters that you do follow. I liked following Ezra, who is Felix's best friend, and I liked finding out what was happening with other characters like Declan, who is his like enemy at the school, and Leah, and Austin, and Marisol. So in this book, I really liked the plot and the characters and the writing and everything like that. All pros for me. As for cons, I didn't really have any strong cons. This book could be a little bit repetitive. There are some things that are just repeated over and over again, which, you know, not a big deal. And my only other con that I had was that I didn't fully love the ending. I know a lot of people are going to absolutely love the ending. It is very happy, I guess. And I'm happy for Felix, but I want the best for Felix. And I feel like the best is yet to come for him. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I just didn't love it. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, so I won't keep talking about it, but yeah, I, I, mm, I'm not gonna spoil it. <laughs> so because I had so many pros for this book and just a couple of cons, I ended up giving this book like four and a half stars. I really loved it and I really, really recommend it if you're at all interested. I don't usually read a whole lot of YA contemporary books, but I adored this one. So that's gonna be my review on Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've read this book. Are you interested in checking it out now? Anything else you want me to know, leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time.